Welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Today we have the simple contract of putting a satellite into polar orbit. And this actually took a lot longer than at first anticipated. And this was due to several different reasons. Um, but before we get into that, the first thing I tried to do was design a new satellite. But unfortunately, we aren't really capable with our current technology of pushing anything substantial into orbit, anything mass-wise or science-wise into orbit. We're just capable of barely getting there. And when I say just barely getting there, I'm talking due east. When I took the Spyro 7 rocket and launched it south, it fell much farther short of orbit than launching due east was. And this is probably due to a few different things. Um, the rotation of the Earth and it not helping us along our trajectory is probably one of the main things, as well as uh, manually flying the rocket and the ascent profile being not very efficient. But the first thing that I wanted to do was adjust the actual design of Spyro 7 to have as much delta V as possible. I wanted to make the rocket more efficient and have, um, well, more capability, uh, more bang for its buck, if you will. Uh, the first thing that we did was we switched out the RD-101 engines with the RD-103 engines, and this involved some ground testing to get some flight data as well. As soon as we um, accepted the contract, we the first thing we did was um, send the two of the engines, the RD-103s, out to the launch pad and test them out, get some data, so it's a little bit more reliable now. The contract itself, um, I forget how many days, the deadline is, but what I do remember is the deadline allowed for two, um, two launches. The time it takes for two Spyro 7s to be built is um, just under the, the contract uh, deadline, so we have two shots at this. Less than um, the first contract, which we had three shots for. Two, two is an okay number. It, it's better than one for sure. Uh, it's better than having um, just sending one up and if it fails, then I fail the contract. Um, luckily, this contract it does not have the entire um, space program like on its back. If we fail this contract, it doesn't take all of our money, so we're still good. So we have the brand new RD-103 engine. I also adjusted the stages for stage one and two. And I also adjusted the staging for the second stage. I got rid of the solid motors that initially uh, ulliged the second stage and instead opted for a sort of a hot stage, I believe it's called. Essentially right before the first stage cuts out, the second stage ignites while it's still connected and then decouples. I think this may give us a little bit of a delta V loss, however, but I don't think it's enough to really matter all that much. Plus, I believe it to be essential. We were having many, many staging events go wrong with this Spyro 7. Um, staging from this first stage to the second stage with this design, especially that low in the atmosphere, proved to break the vehicle apart more often than not in simulations. And it actually caused the second Spyro 7 launch in the previous episode to fail as well in the same way. So performing hot staging on the second stage is actually beneficial to us and it outweighs the Delta V loss it may um, cause. And I tweaked with the size of the fuel tanks many times. Um, so what you see in the uh, testing right now is actually, uh, this design is going to change. The second stage is actually going to become a cylinder instead of a cone, and the fairing is going to be much larger as well. But this gives us a lot more fuel to use. So the weight difference between the fairing being bigger and the tank being bigger actually is outweighed, again, by more fuel being available to the RD-103, which is capable of burning longer um, as well compared to the RD-101s. So essentially this gives us a delta V of closer to 10,000 meters per second. Not quite there yet though. But it still fell short of orbit in testing. And what this came down to is I discovered it's pretty much the ascent profile that's causing us to not uh, reach orbit. Because the design of the rocket is pretty good. It should reach orbit, but it just doesn't. And I believe this to be the cause of manually flying this rocket. 
Um, I like manually flying the rockets for sure. However, I also like making KOS scripts. Um, and with something like this, where even tiny, tiny little bits of inefficiency will make the entire mission not work, um, because our window for success is really, really low with this rocket, uh, because we don't have capability right now um, of getting very far. We can just barely get to orbit, so we really need to just barely get to orbit every time. So what I ended up doing was writing a KOS script to help our ascent profile, help our flight profile. And this KOS script involved a few different phases, and one of those phases is sort of peculiar and sort of experimental, but I believe it helped us. Um, and that was us, us rotating a little bit to the west initially um, as we pitched to the south. So we're pitching just slightly southwest, mostly south initially. And then halfway through the ascent, it actually rotates over to direct south. Um, and instead of um, going direct south, this sort of compensates for the rotation of the earth, I think. Um, because if we launch directly south, our uh, prograde vector for surface does not match up with the prograde vector of orbit. The orbital vector is slightly off, and therefore we're, we're not um, launching directly prograde. Or not, sorry, we're not burning directly prograde, which leads to some delta V being lost there. So going a little bit southwest initially and then pitching us back over to the south is more efficient. So we have an upgraded rocket, the Spyro 7.5. We have a KOS script running our ascent profile. All that's left to do now is accept the contract and hope it works. We're gonna have two shots at this, like I said. And our first launch is gonna happen on the 7th of September, 1955. Alright, everything about the launch has gone nominally until that one Araby on the third stage did not fire, and this caused us to go into a death spin in a suborbital trajectory and burn up in the atmosphere. Fortunately, at one point we were able to do a telemetry analysis of, of the situation and get a little bit of science. But that leaves us with one chance to fulfill this contract. Luckily, it's not make it or break it, but we'd still like to accept the contract and not fail it. So, on the 7th of February, 1956, Spear 7.5 is on the launch pad once more.
All right, luck was on our side on the 7th of February 1956. Spiros 7.5 made it into a polar orbit. Um, the parameters for the contract was an inclination between 85 degrees and 95 degrees. And Spiros 7.5 ended up in a polar orbit with 87 degrees. And this still isn't perfect. It's still not 90 degrees. So I think um, with the ascent profile of going a little bit west and then heading straight south, there's something, there's something there that we can do to make this more efficient. But it's a, it's a good start. So the contract complete. Spiro once again with a satellite in orbit of the Earth. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.